All right, welcome back to the radar topic. I always want you to understand the basis knowledge of radar. If you are electrical engineering, I sure you already know about radar system. So I everything I show here is for the people who don't have uh, knowledge about the radar. For example, like me, uh, I when I try to figure out how the radar work and what it mean, what is that, how it look like, I try to read and watching a video, and I collect all the material today. I want to show, share all of you. If you really don't have the knowledge of a radar, mm. So we continue the last topic. Okay, the radar cannot detect the signal is below the noise level. So the noise level is determined by the terminal is generated by the receiver. Okay, to the set to detect the target, the return signal strain needs to be larger than the noise level. So this defined by property called signal to noise ratio S N R. So S N R is quantitative measure of the signal strain as compared to the level of noise. So if the signal noise ratio is too low, it becomes too difficult for radar, right? Uh, for difficult for radar to distinguish the signal from noise. So higher signal noise, uh, signal noise ratio is desirable for the set to detect the target uh, and generally 7 to 13 decibel signal noise ratio ensures a set for detection arose uh, scenario i mean we have a signal noise ratio right here so it's low the lower than signal noise the ratio is hard to detect the targets right and it's had to stress how number mm -hmm for detection in a row scenario, okay? That's uh, for you know about that. Okay, for calculation, you see, uh, for example, the white car, they had a radar, and they send the signal to the orange car right here, and from the hit to the signal hit to the orange car and get the signal back, reflect the signal back to the radar. How we calculate the range? So we rely on the signal strip time, equal to time, because they had the two way, right? One way come in and when we're back. So we have two time range divided to velocity the C right here, speed of signal, three times 10 power eight meter per second. So from there we can get the range. Okay, so the signal trip time for the radar signal. So the radar determines range of the targets by measuring the trip time of the lateral magnetic signal is radiates. So it's not that the electromagnetic wave travel now speak uh, of the line, right? So to determine the range of the radar need to calculate the trip of time. And we look at this uh, range estimation using the uh, FMCW radars right here. You can see frequency and time. The first one right here, the the top right here, they generate, and right here, this is the orange right here, is the reflect by the signal. And between there, they have a bit frequency. And the, the ship, the, the ship, the frequency right here, they have the time right here, TD is equal to R device C, right? And from zero to the maximum point right here, they have sweep time. TS, all the things you had to know, okay? And the small wraps right here is the, the Fourier, Fourier transformation. It means they change from time domain to frequency domain. Uh, I will talk later. So the FMCW radio waveform has characteristics that frequency linearly, linearly with time, you know that. Uh, if the radar determines the delta between the receipts frequency and ramping frequencies so then it can calculate the trip time and so the we can calculate the range so the, we further divide the range estimate by two so the frequency delta corresponding to weight trip I already mentioned before so important to understand the targets are 
if the target is stationary and then the transmit frequency and receive frequency are the same. So but the ramping frequency within uh, the hardware is continually changing with the time. So we check the delta bit, bit frequency. You know, bit frequency here is right, the, the difference between the uh, transmit signal and the reflex signal right here. They, uh, so we take the delta bit, I mean the bit frequency between the receive and ramp frequency, so we get the tip time. Right here we can uh, set up the formula right here, TD right here over TS equal FB over B, B the total, the, the band squid right here. Okay, so from that you plug this formula into TD and you get a range formula right here, right? And FB means the frequency ramping minus receive. It means you got frequency right here minus the frequency right here you got this one. So I will see the equation, the range calculation required the term, term TS and term bandwidth B script, right? What the top time? Top time right sweep time right here from zero to I guess maximum right here the top times and the bandwidth right here is the from right here the maximum point right here frequency up to the zero right here and those value are determined as the five configuration on radar based on the range resolution and tip time for radar maximum range. Uh, for example, from uh, frequency generator right here, they generate the waveform linearly in time, right? Uh, right here, so after they go to the antenna, amplify an antenna, they send a signal to the target, and the signal uh, right here, electromagnetic signal get back from the uh, receive antenna, and they go to the missile, and we have the difference right here from the, for example, you send right here 77 gigahertz, and after the signal, you know, you the missile, you got the bit frequency, the difference between the uh, send the 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 original one, the sending signal, and the uh, receive signal. You have the difference right here, the bit frequency. Okay, and they minus together, you got the on are uh, zero one gigahertz right and from that you can calculate the range you have the C you have the FB right here you have the TS okay TS uh, relies on the maximum brain you can calculate so I show you example later and um, Because when we uh, general frequency generator generate the FMC chirp for given the B swap oh, and the TS, let's say we transmit this the 70 gigahertz every time this generate the frequency that you gave you the TS and B swap the bandwidth of that uh, signal, okay? And for example, you transmit 77 gigahertz and it's returned to the radar after hitting the target in certain time duration. So the radar receiver capture the signal, process subtraction and measure frequency delta between the receive signal and linearly ramming signal right here. The difference between the receive signal and ramming signal, they have the base frequency. So the delta in the frequency is called the base frequency is proportional to the tube time. So based on the equation right here, we can calculate the range. Here's the picture show you the frequency. They uh, detected the, some of the targets right here. It's high frequency, it's more distant, right? And this is small frequency, and you have the pedestrian right here, and truck right here is close together. And the truck right here, why they have the power? Because they, why? From last time, you can see the uh, cross area, RCS, they bigger, it means right here, cross right here, lambda, right? Uh, rush, radar, radar cross section, because this one is bit so, This one is big, so the power is larger. It's, it's more the signal strength of the signal reflect back to the radar is larger, right? So, 
Well, here is the cross radar cross section is larger, so this is the higher power, right? Then the pedestrian right here. Mm -hmm. So here's the one small example where you can use that formula to calculate the range. For example, they they calculate the range in the meter for targets measure base frequency. Uh, they give you the base frequency of different targets right here with different uh, base frequency 0, 1, 1, and 30 megahertz and 24 megahertz. So, and then so give you the maximum radar, uh, 300 meter, and range resolution, 1 meter, and speed of light right here. And also give you the formula, the third terms, TS, right? So, right here. So right now they had to calculate the range in meter for targets right here. How far for each one? You use the formula one. You can use the map lab easily. You can declare the variable right here. See, um, they have for B squared right here. The formula right here and range mark T S and base frequency. You just plug into the formula and you can calculate the range quickly. So, and one thing I want to talk uh, with you is the some resolution of the radar, angle resolution, range resolution, and velocity resolution. Range resolution. Um, mean a capability operator to distinguish between the two targets that's are very close to each other in the range okay and velocity resolution if the two targets are have the same range they can still be resolved if they had traveling at the different velocity and angle resolution is radar capable capable of the separating two targets spatially if the two targets are at similar range traveling at the same velocity then they can still be resolved based on the angle in the radar coordinate system okay one thing i expect you understand the doppler phenomenon okay this is really important uh, to understand the velocity calculate the how the radar have you get the velocity of the targets uh, for example right here if you're, I think one of you already got the speeding ticket from the police, right? They always use the gun to check your speed, right, on the road. So how is work? You mm, thinking right here, radar from the gun of the police right here. They generate the transmit frequency, and your car approaching move forward to the radar, and they every time they move in the uh, reflect. Uh, frequency right here is really high right here you see and they move move to the pullet right here and from right here they have the signal or reflect back to the radar and this signal is really high frequency and another way if they the car move forward from uh, move away from the radar so the reflection signal right here is low frequency from that, the change the phase on the difference, uh, the frequency you can the difference uh, phase in the uh, uh, in the two signal you can know the velocity of the target. So the velocity estimate radar based on the uh, the phenomenon called the Doppler effect. So as the per Doppler theory, an approaching target, I mean the forward to the uh, radar will shift an emitted and reflected frequency higher. It means frequency. If you move toward the radar, its frequency is really higher. Whereas a uh, receiving target, I mean the car move are uh, far away from the radar. So uh, receiving targets will shift the both frequency to be lower than transmitted frequency right here the picture of why the, the, the police use the, the gun right here to check your speed okay and right here so you double estimation when you send the frequency app and you get it back a little bit different 
uh, the blood addition of frequency because of the Doppler effect at D, okay? And right here in the uh, signal way right here, because right now the, the target is moving, so you um, the frequency return in, uh, have to add uh, had to add the Doppler frequency a little bit Doppler frequency right here. A lot of time you already see here right here don't have the Doppler effect because the stationary uh, target right right here you can see the Doppler not effect because they, we measure the target in uh, that's in the stationary. So right now the car is moving right and we have to ask. We have to add the Doppler frequency right here. So the base frequency right now is not only related to the range, right? Uh, of the targets, but also it to but also to its related radar velocity with respect to radar. Okay, the base frequency right now is not only related to the range of the target, but also uh, to its related radar velocity with respect to radar, right? Right now, you can see they have when the object stock is moving, they you have the base frequency right now impact a little bit with the uh, additional frequency right here. Uh, so there be a shift in the receive signal frequency due to Doppler effect uh, of the target's velocity. The Doppler shift uh, pro Proportional, proportional to the velocity of the target with the formula uh, frequency Doppler equal to velocity of the target divided to the wasteland, right? So by measuring the shift in frequency due to Doppler, radar can determine the velocity. The base frequencies comprise uh, about frequency component FR you know, frequency due to the range and FD frequency shift due to the velocity. So in this case, the automotive radar FD is very, the frequency Doppler is very small in comparison to the uh, frequency uh, due to the range. So the Doppler, the Doppler velocity calculated uh, by measuring the rate chain of phase across multiple tubes. So right now you have the Frequency right now is the uh, the ray of chain. So the re relationship between the ray of chain of the phase and the frequency right here. So we calculate the Doppler phase shift. We calculate the Doppler frequency by measuring the ray of chain of phase. So the chains, the phase chains occur due to small displacement of the moving targets for every turb duration. So each short duration generally in microseconds. So in reserve small displacement in millimeters. So this small displacement for every chirp leads to chain in phase. Using the ray of chain of phase, we can determine the doubler frequency. So if the path between the targets and radar chain amount delta S and the phase of the waves receive by radar is shaped by the delta phi right here is called delta s divided lambda. So from that you have the, you have the lambda equal f over c you plug in formula and you have delta s divided c equal delta t so you have this formula the chain of phase frequency right here equal the chain of phase with the time equal the Delta F, the chain of the frequency. So that's the way you can calculate the velocity. So we discussed the theory range and double estimation along the equation, okay? But radar to efficient process this measurement digitally, so the signal need to be converted from the analog to digital domain for and further from the domain to the frequency domain. So that's the way you use the Fourier transformation. So analog digital ADC converter converts the analog signal to, into digital signal bus. Uh, ADC the pose the fast Fourier. So the transform is used to convert signal from the time 
domain to frequency domain right here you can have a time domain right here right here you have frequency domain so I don't go too deep into the map how the tra Fourier transfer uh, or cons uh, conversions right here but uh, let's say we need to change from time domain to frequency domain So conversion frequency domain is important to do the spectral analysis on the signal and determine the shift in frequency due to rain and Doppler. So traveling signal in time domain. The time domain signal comprise a multiple frequency, so components as so in the picture right here. So in order to separate our, our frequency components, the Fourier transformation uh, is U. So here is the result. So each shrub is assembled in atoms. So for each sample is produced rain spin. Process is repeated for every single chirp. So creating the uh, Fourier transform block. Each spin means every column of block represents increased rain value. So that's the end of last spin, represents the maximum rain of the radar. Right here you can see the detect tree object right here. Um, you have the S right here, the chain uh, from the time domain to frequency domain right here, the bit uh, frequency S. So the three bits right here, three bits are uh, in the frequency domain corresponding to bit frequencies of three different car located in uh, 150 to 50 and 300 meter range from the vehicle. So you can do some the simulation in the uh, map lab is have the function ready-made function where you just call and they have to right here they generate to the signal frequency signal right here of a first time and after that you can see how they change into the uh, transform Fourier Fourier transform Fourier transform and you get the target the distance target right right here so in generally the, the turn of phase of two different C, uh, of the signal right here you got the phase delta phi you can get a frequency right uh, that will be true right here the same and the strain difference the phi right here so here another example, we use the map lab to calculate the velocity of the four targets right here with double frequency strip right here. 3, 4.5 kilohertz, 11 kilohertz, negative 3 kilohertz. And we have the formula. When so the formula and we apply the formula right here, you can see frequency right here, wavelength. And double zip, all this one plug into the formula. VR equal double zip time to wasteland over two. You mean that's formula. When you're in now the delta app, the ship of frequency, you will apply this formula you calculate the velocity of the of the targets so the data field rate is helper to get the then the chain of frequency and after the chain of frequency you apply the formula to calculate the uh, velocity object so from here you can see uh, right here, but uh, the Doppler frequency ship right here, they have uh, 3, 4, 5, 11, the negative 0.3 kilohertz. So, which one you think the targets are close to the uh, radar? From here, right here, for example, if all the targets were 200 meter range ahead to the radar uh, vehicle and the velocity uh, of the vehicle is 5 meter per second, then in next five seconds, which 
of the targets would be closest to the vehicle. So either C, right? Because they high, they have very high the Doppler frequency right here. So they have the highest velocity. So one range being determined by running the range uh, Fourier transform across all the chirps. So a second a Fourier transform implemented along second dimension to determine the Doppler frequency strip. I discussed the Doppler is estimated by processing the array of chain of phase across the multiple chirps. So the Doppler Fourier transform is implemented after all chirps E assessment and R sin and range FFT are run on them. So right here you can see that the FFT gives the best frequency amplitude and phase of its targets. So this phase vary as we move from one chirp to another due to the target's more displacement. Uh, when the second FFT implemented, so it determines the array of chain of phase. So with nothing but the Doppler frequency shift right here. So after run the second Fourier transformation across the row, uh, so we have the 2D FFT right here. The output is range Doppler response curve represent the image range on the one axis and Doppler on the another right here the Doppler velocity this axis okay so the range of the targets right here you can see that on the middle right here this is zero right here velocity zero right here this station stationary narrow targets okay and this side receding targets move forward right down but the approaching target is a move toward the right down so you get the velocity of a targets and the range. So in the map lab, they have the function help you to do the Fourier transformation, uh, 1D and 2D. So you can practice on it, all right, to see how it looks like. So in this part, the more important thing, I hope you understand the, the Doppler frequency, the Doppler effect, uh, and and uh, how the car measures uh, the target, okay, uh, relies on the Doppler effect, how we calculate the velocity if we know the chain of differences, okay. Uh, the chain of difference uh, is mean the chain of the phase of two different, two, two, two di different signal. And Right here, the chain of the frequency equal the chain of phase with the time. Right here, and if we know this one, we easy to know the velocity of the target. And right here, you can see that right here the in impact of the frequency doubler they lead to the training of the bit frequency. So right now bit frequency is not only related to the range of the targets, but also related to the radio velocity with respect to radar because the objects the targets right now are moving is not is in the stationary. They have to plug in a little bit the additional no, no frequency right here. Doppler radars mean you send the signal right here. If your car move toward the radar, you get the high frequency back. But you move away from the radar, you have the low frequency back, right? Then the formula right here helps you calculate the the velocity of the uh, targets related to the radar. Okay. If you know the chain of differences of the who are at the returns the signal and they transmit the signal, you can calculate the velocity. That's the Doppler uh, effect. I hope you understand this one is really important. And the next, another thing is the, um, uh, the change of the time domain 
to the frequency domain to help you analyze the signal and determine the shape of frequency due to the rain and Doppler. Uh, you use the Fourier transformation, and I don't go to the how the map work in this case. You can figure out on the website. And the result right here they show you the targets right here with the uh, ABAP T. And you can practice on the map lab. They can show you, you generate the signal, frequency of signal and you get the uh, and you change to the uh, ABAP T through a chain conversion. You got the how you got the signal right here, the target signal target right here. Uh, another example right here, we got the different frequency back to the radar, you know, right here, really high, really low. So how we know the velocity for each of the targets, for each of the frequency right here, okay, this target kilohertz back 5.5, uh, 4.5 kilohertz back for another target 11 kilohertz, right here is really high frequency back, so maybe it's you see, you can apply the formula, you can calculate right here, really high velocity of a target. And another range can be determined by running the FT cross or chart right here. Second, Fourier transform uh, it implemented along the second dimension determined to, to determine the Doppler frequency shift. So we have the first and the second MFT right here. I hope you understand that. So the FFT is to give us the base frequency and amplitude and the phase of the target. So when the second ABFT is imitation, so it determines the right of chain of phase. And we know the Doppler frequency shift. And right here, second ABFT is showing the picture right here. You have a Doppler velocity in the middle right here, the, the, dot, uh, the, the, the velocity of the target. Right here, you know the range of the targets. Right here, this side, right side, left side, left side, you know. This one approaching targets and which one receiving targets. And right here in the middle, zero is equals velocity equals zero is mean the station stationary target. So so that's uh that's all the thing I hope you understand in this video. See you in the next video.